What's up people? Now we're going to install Fusion PBX. And the first thing you need to do to start with this is to create a virtual machine. And so we're going to go back into DigitalOcean. In my case, I already have a virtual machine spinned up and I have this IP address right here. So what you want to do to start is you want to generate a virtual machine that gives you an IP address. Put that IP address into the DNS settings if you want to use a domain. And you're going to have to create a host name with an A record and, uh, and wait for that to propagate. And then you'll be able to use um, the domain in the place of the IP address. And you'll see that in the settings that I go through. If you don't want to use a, a domain name, you can still use the IP address and you don't have to bother with the DNS settings at all. So in this case, I need to reinstall. So I'm going to destroy this, rebuild with Debian 11. And then we're going to go into our notes and go to the new installation and log in. All right, we can minimize this now and go to the terminal, which is the command prompt and type in, oh, we got to delete the old SSH key. Just go down here and delete these and go do that again. Okay, so new password, or sorry, current password, then we go to the new password, which I have in my notes right here. Of course, you can make any password you want. There is no right passwords, whatever you want to use. So once we have a fresh install and we've added the DNS records, if we choose to do that, then we just run the command. So what I generally start out with is I install some, some apps that I'm going to use. I'm going to use Tmux, wget, and htop. You don't necessarily need um, HTOP, but I like the I like the um, task manager, so I install all those. It's going to help to use Tmux in this case because when we go halfway through the installation, I've been getting kicked out of the installation. So it's kind of like part of the um, fail to ban firewall or dy dynamic firewall is kicking me out sometimes when I run this installation. So I run Tmux to run a session that's not going to be closed if I lose access to the terminal or to the console. So I put in that line and all these commands will be in the companion doc like I usually put. So just go to the command companion doc in the description and you'll have everything if you want to go step by step and copy and paste these commands. Okay, so we're here at this particular part because I updated the entire system. And what I recommend is uh, just go up to install the upgraded um, package manager or the package maintainer as they're describing here and just update this. You don't have to do this. You could go to the keep the local version, but I like to keep everything up to date, especially for security and compatibility. So just go to the install the package man manager or maintainer and click enter. So use the arrow keys to go up and then click enter to execute. Okay, so we have the apps installed, the three apps that I mentioned. We have the full update, and now we're going to run uh, Tmux to install or get that uh, session running so it won't collapse if I lose access to the server. And what I want to do is open up a couple tabs by holding Control B or holding Control, pushing B, and then C. And that opens up a new tab. Um, all right, so we just go to the next command which is wget command, which downloads the install script. Now the command after that is just to configure the install script. This is specifically for um, changing the domain name. And also you can change the username and password if you like. But I just stick with the, um, the, the generated password and the username is, uh, the username is uh, admin. I just keep that. You can change it if you like, you'll see right here. So what happens is we have the defaults. I'm going to copy this one line that I'm going to change. So it's YYP and then we uh, hit I to insert. I'm going to use pound or hash to comment out that line. And then I'm going to edit this line that I just copied and I'm going to make it my domain name that I'm going to use here. And if you didn't change your DNS record or your DNS settings and create an area record with this domain or with this host name, then you don't need to do this at all. Just leave it by default. It'll use the IP address. Um, you can generate a password if you want a manual password and you can also generate or change this um, username if you want to change the username. All right, so we're just going to escape out of that. I hold shift, hit Z and then Z to save. And then we're going to go to the next command. And the next command is going to install. It's going to install free switch and it's going to install Fusion PBX. And that takes 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm going to pause everything and come back when it's finished. Okay, so we have a result. We've installed it. Now we just want to copy this top part here to get the, grab the password. And I'm going to paste it in my notes here just so I have a reference for it. Okay, let's make sure we're not connect, we're not disconnected, so that's good news. And let's see what we need to do next. Where are we got to go? 
So let's type or let's uh, yeah type paste in the command to get the SSL certificate for the domain when we log in. And you can do this if you use the IP address, you just have to add the IP address rather than the domain name. So in my case, I'm gonna type in domain name. And if you wanna add more than one, you can just use a space and then add another, another one if you like, or put the IP address in if you wanna use your IP address to create the SSL certificate. Type whatever email address you want for reference and it's gonna generate the key. And then you can, we're gonna go right into the browser and log in that way and finish up all the installation and configuration. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna do is reboot the server. Okay, now the server should be restarted, so let's just go to the browser and we're gonna type in the domain name or in your, if you used the IP address, type in the IP address. And as you can see, it should have this padlock here indicating that it's signed a signed certificate. And we're gonna grab the password for this, which was generated by the script or by the installation, which is down in your notes. Hopefully you copied your notes the same way I copied my notes because the passwords are not gonna be the same, I'll tell you that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is gonna create new users. Now, what I typically do is I create a new user and then I log back in right away under the new user account and just build out all my settings. Um, in this case, I'm not going to, but I'll show you where you'd create that user. So you go to accounts, users, you would add, and then just type in the username, password, confirm the password, the email address for recovery. Um, the language doesn't really matter. Time zone really doesn't matter, but you could add it. And then the, the most important part is the super admin. You want it to be the highest level of admin on this server. So make sure it's the super admin. And then you will save that and then go back and you'll have two uh, two users here. And then you can log out, which is go home, log out, and log, log back under your new user. In this case, I'm not going to do that. The next thing you do is go to your domains and you you add a domain. In this case, I'm going to add another domain here, which is what I've been uh, using before. So my phones are configured for this. And then the domain name, test tenant domain. All right. So save that. It'll show confirmation. You'll go back to the domains. You'll see both domains. And then you can flip between, go to the top right and change between the two domains here. In this case, I'm not quite done with this primary domain. My I call it the admin domain. I'm going to create uh, access control settings. And you'll see these two options here. Go to providers. And in this case, I've done this before, so everything's in the history, and I'm just going to just put all that stuff in. And your uh, access control IP addresses are going to be completely different if you're using a different provider. I'm using VoIP Innovations, so these are the, um, these are the IP addresses you'd use for that provider. The description doesn't matter. You can type in any label you'd like there, any reference, and then save. Click back. And then we're going to go to the next section, which has to do with configuring the tenant or the domain. Okay, so now as we move on, we're going to go into the domain we want to configure. And now we're going to go to the gateways, which is under accounts and then gateways. And we're going to create a primary gateway. And in this case, we'll use a phone number that I have configured for this test. And the password is none because you have to have something in there. So you just type in none because the authentication for VoIP innovations is by IP address. Uh, it's not like a, a username and password with some of the providers, you'll have a username and password. And with other providers, you'll just authenticate with the IP address. I think it's a whole lot easier just to use the IP address and basically give the server permission to access the provider and tell the provider that the server IP address to give it um, permission to use the services to make and receive calls. And so we have all the information here. The realm is sometimes is probably not important, but I, I'm used to putting it in. So I just put it there. And the description, just type in whatever description you want. I type in primary gateway. And then once everything done. The register, oh, this is the part I sometimes forget. It's really important to turn this off. Unless you're going to be using the username and password, you turn it off uh, to false because you don't want it to make any requests and try to use those credentials. All right, so we're going to add a secondary. Sometimes you won't need all this. I like to add redundancy. So I add a secondary to gateways and a tertiary gateways. So the tertiary gateway is definitely not necessary. Redundancy is important, but you don't need to necessarily go three redundant channels. And in this case, again, it's the same provider, so I'm not registering, I'm not using the credentials. It's reg it's authenticating strictly by the IP addresses. Okay, last one. This is the tertiary gateway. Make sure it does not register. Type in whatever you want for the description and save that. So the next thing we're going to do is go into the um, build out an IVR to receive calls. Because what I want to do, I haven't configured any extensions or ring groups, so I have to have 
a destination for these calls. So before I can create a destination DID or destination phone number, a phone number to call, I need to create a destination for that phone number. So I'm going to go in and create an IVR, but before I create an IVR, I need a recording because it's something needs to play when the IVR is answering the calls. So let's go to recordings, let's go add, and we need to put in um, a file, an audio file. I have a generic IVR greeting. Click on upload when you have the file selected. And then let's go to applications, go to IVR menu, click add. And your naming conventions are gonna be completely different than mine. You can match mine if you want, but the extensions are gonna be specifically to how you wanna organize all your extensions. There's phone extensions, IVR extensions, call group extensions. Everything is associated to an extension. So in my, the way I configure everything, my IVR extensions are always an 8,000 range. So again, you can match me if you want or just come up with your own conventions. The, the greeting long is going to be that IVR I just uploaded from to the recording section. No short greeting, or you can add one if you like. Um, I'm not going to configure any of this, but because I don't have any extensions anyway, so I basically have just you know tones and, and audios that are pre pre configured here. Uh, so what are we going to do? Exit action is going to be a hang up. The direct dial is what's going to help me dial an extension after I've configured them. So basically, when somebody hears the recording on the IVR menu, they can dial an extension directly with the true option here. So I think that's important. And I'm just going to type in my description. Make sure it's enabled. Make sure the context is the same as the domain up here or the, the tenant up here and then save it. Okay, now we're going to create a destination DID or destination phone number. So we're going to click add and always make sure you're in the right tenant or the domain here. The country code for me is one because I'm in the US. The destination number is the number I've been using the whole time. Your destination number is going to be completely different and it's going to be associated to whatever you've registered with your provider. And what do we have to do? Destination phone number. Now the action in this case is gonna be my generic IVR. The groups don't matter. You wanna record it or not? Probably not because it's gonna take up a lot of resources to record every single call. You have a voice. It's, uh, let's see what else we can do. That's pretty much it. And the description is my test DID. And DID for those of you who don't know, it's direct inward dialing. And those are numbers that refer to all the incoming calls. So when we save that, go back, and then we have um, a destination phone number, which we can call. And what happens when we get a call, it goes to the IVR. And then from the IVR, it describes that we have no menu because we didn't configure a menu yet. But in the IVR, we can do a direct dial to the extensions that we're going to configure later. So now we're going to create an outbound route so we can place calls. All right, so let's go to add and let's just fill in our gateways. So we have the primary gateway, the secondary gateway, and the tertiary gateway to make sure we have that redundancy. And for this outbound route, we're gonna make it a default North American outbound route. And the prefix in this case is gonna be one. It doesn't need to be there. I've used this plenty of times without the prefix, but I've gotten the habit of adding more data rather than leaving some data out. And what else are we gonna do? We're just gonna call it um, 10 digit outbound route and save that. Now I'm going to make a, a seven digit outbound route. So anybody who's calling within the area code of 559 can just dial seven digits rather than the full 10 digits. So let's click add, do the same gateways, go to the seven digit local. In this case, we're going to go to the 1559 because that's the prefix, the country code plus the area code, and then the rest would be the seven digit number there. And what else are we doing? Description would be my seven digit outbound route for my notes. And now we have you can tell that we've added this. We've added this primary gateway prim um, and the primary uh, gateway seven digit, and it automatically generated these other two. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the extensions and other things that make it a little bit better user experience. Okay, so we're going to start configuring, or not configuring, but we're going to be creating the extensions. It's not difficult at all to create the extensions, but let me take you over here to this other section that might be blocking some things. Okay, so there's nothing blocking so far. In this case, or in this installation, I turned off all my phones. Sometimes when I had my phones running, they would try to register with the um, with the server without the extensions, and they would be blocked by this event guard, which is basically like a firewall for um, uh, for free switch or yeah for free switch so let's go over to accounts go to extensions and i'm going to import a lot of extensions but i'll show you how to add them i use 400 as the, the starting range you can of course use whatever range you want you can go two ex two digit extensions three digit extensions four digit ex extensions pretty much any length you want uh, but most people go with three digit extensions and they start with 100 um, i use 400 for my own personal preferences for all my configurations 
So in this case, we will add the extension number. The voicemail password will be automatically generated unless you want to manually put it in. The only thing that I think is really important is to create an outbound caller ID name and an outbound caller ID number. You don't need to have it, but it helps when you make those calls that the caller ID is set properly. And then we have, there's other places to set the caller ID, but um, it's not easy to configure and I'm not going to go through that in this configuration. The last thing is to make sure the domain matches the domain in the top right. Type the description if you want. And let me type in and the email address. You don't have to have an email address, but if you want to have, you want to configure the email server in this uh, on this server to send out files for voicemail to email, then you want to email there. I'm not going to go through how to configure the uh, email server or how to attach to your SMTP server, so you don't need an email address there. And I'm just going to import a bunch of, so I have that configuration there. And you see that a successful extension added is right here. I'm going to import the rest just so it matches the extensions I already have configured. And this is, this is the configuration. This is basically the layout of how you'd configure and upload um, using a CSV configuration. And so you just have the extension here, the password here, the outbound caller ID name and the outbound caller ID number. And then the domain is here or the tenant is here. The extension, uh, sorry, this is the destination, sorry, the description. And then just click continue, line these up, make sure this is all good and then click import. And so now the only thing that you'll see that's different is the one I entered manually, it says true enabled. The other ones don't have that. So all all you we need to do is highlight or check select all these extensions that are not enabled and click toggle. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next step. But before I do that, I'm going to pause this, turn my phones on, make sure they register properly, and we'll make sure um, they're registered and nothing's blocked and everything's working as far as registration goes. So let me turn them on. I'll be right back. Okay, I've turned them on and I don't know what the status is yet. I'm doing this in real time. So let's go to the registrations, which is under status. Yeah, well, so far they're not going to. Oh, you know why? Because I need to um, change the password on them. So let me do that. Mm -hmm. So we just log into the phone itself. We got to change the password. Oh no, I did it backwards. Okay, so we have to wait. So let me pause this and go back into it because they have them all chained together. So I just turned the one phone off that was connecting all the other, one, other ones to the internet. So let me pause this and uh, we'll come back when they're back on. All right, so this hopefully all restarted and let's see if I can get some results out of it. I need to connect to this one. Great. And I need to connect to this one. Okay, so this is the one I should have configured first because it's the end of the chain. And my daisy chain, my, all my phones connected together. Okay. So I need to change the password on this one. Let's just change the password on this middle phone. Uh-oh. Wrong tab. Where is it? Let's make sure this one's connected now. This one's registered, so it should be good. I should have one registered phone so far. There we go. I'll just wait for the other phones to populate, and then we'll continue with the... Uh, the video. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that all the phones are now registered and I tested everything. They're calling out and I can call in. The phone system is complete. You're actually done. The only thing I'm going to add is just some finishing touches that I like to put on my phone systems to make sure they're just a little bit more usable. It's just a couple settings, a couple features I like to enable that are not built in to this system by default. So what I think I'll do is I'll just configure it. I'll show you how to configure these features um, to use the system a little bit uh, better. And you can test them yourself. Generally, these work if you get all the... Um, all these changes correct and you don't make any wrong spaces or delete the wrong things. So just be careful what you're editing and we'll go through it together. Let's see. So we just make sure we're in the right domain, the right domain you want to configure. And then let's go into the dial plan manager. In this case, we're going to search for bind and search that. And you'll see there's one result. So just select that result, click copy, continue. And we want to open or go into or edit the copied result. Let's change this to global. Make sure you spell it correctly. And the domain is global, enable true. And this time I'm just going to call it uh, custom bind action. Okay, so you'll see in the companion document that I have a line in there. It says local star seven execute or exec execute extension and all that. So copy that entire line right into this section here below star four on the new line there. Just match everything I'm doing it. So the tag is action type is uh, bind action or bind digit action. Copy that line that I have in the companion doc for data. There's no break. Group one is default. The only thing you need to change is the order. Make it 52. 
keep it the enabled is true and then save all right click back to go back to the, break the, all the dial plan options and let's type in park for search and then search park and you'll see these entries here in this case you want to click on the top line which is valet park and you want to it's the only one that reads true on enabled so just click on true and it'll toggle to false and then you want to highlight or sorry not highlight select a uh, valet park out and valet park in and click copy continue and you'll have copies here so let's go into valet park in first to edit this and now let's change these to 70 so everywhere that is 59 you want to change it to 70 this we're going to change to global we're going to change that to global we're going to change that to true and we're going to call this one copy park in and every section where you see a 59 you want to change it to 70 every section oops that wasn't good make sure you don't make any mistakes don't make any spaces or remove any spaces you want to keep everything exactly the same we're just removing 59 with 70 or replacing 59 with 70 the other the other setting we want to change is this action set valley announce it says slot disable we want to set that to false and then go ahead and let me just check my work 70 everywhere yes 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 and then we're saving that then we're clicking back search for park again and then go to the other copy which is the valet park out and we're going to do the same thing replace all 59s with 70s so where it's 59 replace it with 70 change this to global enable true and we're going to call this custom park out change 59 to 70 and over here 59 to 70 okay not much to change in there to save that and click back and let's check search for park okay so now what this setting or what this change allows you to do is when you're on the phone you can actually park the call by pressing star seven and then it'll read back the bin number that it's in and if you want to get that call back you just dial that four digit extension that it reads off to you it starts at 7001 and goes to 7099 unless you're gonna you'll probably never use more than a couple of them but we just built out the entire range of 100 options or maybe it's more like 98 options um so you can have technically 98 calls but most of my customers never get past nine or ten so this will probably be fine so star seven to park it'll read back the bin number and you just dial that bin number to engage the call okay so what's the next thing the next thing is uh what is it it's page okay so this is not necessary either none of this is necessary except for i just think it makes it a little bit nicer to use the system so you just select that and then copy go into the copy and remove the star so what this allows you to do is press star sorry not star what i'm saying is this allows you to press eight and then your extension so if you press eight and the extension in my case it's eight four zero zero it'll allow you to page or intercom the extension and it'll turn the phone on so you can talk directly through it without having the person who's receiving the call to engage the phone pick up the receiver push the speakerphone button you can just talk to them without them touching the phone at all and i think that's a really good way to intercom people and most people really like using the intercom feature that way rather than having it ring and having the person who's receiving the call pick up the phone or, or touch the phone or you know lift the handset or push the speakerphone button and let's see and the only other thing we have to do is take the pin off because right now it has a, a set pin just set that to false so it doesn't require a pin number to use that feature make it true and then what we need to do you don't need to do this either but what i would do is go back into page and disable the other one so the default one has a star in front of it just take this off just turn it off you don't need to turn it off because it does not interfere with the these star codes because they're completely different um, keystrokes or strings of characters and so now that we've configured all that i've added my little special personal touches now you can fully use the system if you get that um, a, you know a good provider that you like and you set up your extensions properly and everything else without the provider you can still set up extensions and call in between the extensions so all is not lost if you don't want to go the extra step and have a provider or a sip trunk you can actually register different extensions just call between the extensions and it'll work just fine